yeah this is the fluke make this is the fluke make i am just keeping it for the camera because when you get the video you should be able to rerun this and get this model number if you can focus on the model number that would be great no if you just google and ask for any chinese supplier you will get n number of suppliers of uh, thermal gun they call this as thermal gun so if you just put this is this is the temperature you see here i get the temperature directly here 24.9 or something if i put to myself so i am getting a temperature of it's increasing 29 29.3 it's increasing so because my emissivity as i said is one and i can change this emissivity also i can change this emissivity okay so how do i measure the emissivity of a body i will take a plate i will put a thermocouple again my mother is thermocouple i cannot forget thermocouple okay and in velocity pitot tube we cannot forget basics so i take a plate put a thermocouple onto the plate i get independent temperature of my plate is that okay now i put this gun onto the plate i adjust my emissivity here such that such that temperature shown by this gun and the temperature indicated by my thermometer or thermocouple not thermometer thermocouple matches so that is how i measure the that is what we do in the lab we measure the emissivity not with the thermal gun we do with the camera okay so but then this is quite this was this i guess costed us around 25 to 30000 rupees but you will get now within 3 to 4000 rupees also okay so you can stop using thermometer for measuring water temperature you can start using thermal gun okay so my point was for your emissivity experiment you independently measure the emissivity by anyway you are getting the temperature there isn't it so please add this tool to your lab at least that much care of this thermal gun business will go away in fact uh, mumbai police is seriously thinking for surveillance purposes for for surveillance purposes using thermal camera okay now coming to thermal camera again thanks to professor vedula only he only gave me this tool in 2004 and asked me to play with it he just told me this is the camera which i have purchased from departmental money i have invested 30 lakh make sure that you use it left and right but that has been the eye for us since 10 years okay so thanks to him otherwise i would have never learned thermal camera what it was okay so this is so this is the thermal camera okay whatever i want to do the beauty of thermal camera is it's not like photographic i have i need not have to be as smart as he is for normal photography i can just zoom it any dumb guy like me also can measure okay so that is the advantage of thermal camera okay point is missing ah luckily it is showing but i cannot get the colors so what is the what is that i said for thermal camera the advantage of this thermal camera is that i will get no i don't have i don't want to meddle with this so yeah now you can see okay so this is how pixel by pixel see i can get throughout in fact this thermal camera is being used for various applications various applications even in medical applications okay so wherever if there is any any tissue cancerous tissue apparently the temperatures there are going to be slightly higher so this is a very non intrusive tool to diagnose that okay people are working at it i came to know that one of the doctors in ahmedabad is working on that and in so my request is if you can purchase not this expensive but nowadays cameras have come very cheap as cheap as around 1 to 1.5 lakhs if you can if you can afford that i would strongly suggest that you please purchase a camera any help regarding supplier or getting an appropriate quotation i will be of help for you no 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 not that not that way because we have been working with these guys quite often so we can use this so that is the advantage of thermal camera imagine same thing measuring with so many thermocouple i have to, if i have to measure my body temperature i have to put so many thermocouples all over the body instead of that i am getting pixel by pixel all over the place in one shot 
it is a magic only, it is next to magic, nothing else, it is next to magic. Okay. Ha, provided I know my, it will give my temperatures, provided I know my emissivity. I am bugged throughout the institute. Oh, you have a thermal camera, I will measure temperature. That is not true. If a tool is there and if it is running tool and I want to measure the tool temperature, how will I measure the emissivity is going to continuously vary with temperature and it is moving. So, answer is thermal camera is useful only if emissivity is known. I make I make that unknown known by appropriately putting a paint, but if you are handling some other surface on which whose temperature you are on whose surface coating you have no control, you have gone to furnace and you just want to measure the temperature, you cannot just like that measure because you do not know the emissivity, emissivity. Okay. So, we will move on to lab, I will be soft on you and I will only present the data, you will not present the data. So, I am taking the responsibility myself, but you can question me with reference to your results. So, first let me let me take the forced convection. Now, in the forced convection which what all measurements we have taken? Baba, sorry huh? you are all teachers I should not be using the word Baba, but I am I am used to use this word Baba from no from my teacher again back in convent. So, that is I cannot help it. Okay. So, so what is that we are measuring? What is that we are measuring here? Temperatures T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7 voltage and current. So, what is the did we first do energy balance? E dot in minus E dot out plus E dot G equal to E dot ST did I do that? I have a, if I have not done that, then I have not done what I am supposed to do. What is that I am supposed to do? What is that I am giving? Voltage into current, that is what I am dumping into my system. So, that is here in this case 100 into 1.05, in this case also perhaps he has not done. In your cases, let us take any of these cases. Ah, what is dumped then? What is lost in the Correct. That is right, but first inputting I am inputting that much into my control volume. How much is your typical voltage into current? Let me ask anyone, Mangesh, what is your voltage into current? 118 into, ah, now you calculate and tell me what is MCP delta T? What was your M dot CP delta T? 50, yes, 42.9. So, there is loss of 50 percent or even more than that. So, which of this heat I should take for calculating heat flux, heat transfer coefficient or heat flux MCP delta T. So, if I take this MCP delta T, now that delta T is of what order in your experiment? 4 degree Celsius. Is that a good number? Is that a good number? Why it is not a good number? Why delta T, Professor Parshuram Chitragar says that delta T 4 is not good. Why 4 is not good? 10 is good, you are saying. Why 10 is good? Error in measurement of 1 degree. So, actually, we should not be using the word error, actually. There is nothing like error in this world. Why? Because error by definition is measured minus actual or actual minus measured. I keep telling this all the time measured minus actual or actual, actual you will never get in this world, true value, no one tells the truth in this world, truth is always, truth is always elusive. So, true value you are never going to get, so error you can never estimate, all that you can estimate is only uncertainty about this deviation. Okay. So, this is uncertainty, uncertainty in my temperature measurement is typically for a thermocouple, whatever circus I do it will be of the order of 1 to 2 degrees. Everyone in papers write 0.5, it will be 1 degree Celsius at least. So, if it is 1, my deviation or uncertainty in my temperature measurement is 1 upon 4. 25 percent is my uncertainty in my H directly. So, that is why my delta T's have to be larger. Okay. 
So, that is one of the points which we need to emphasize. Uncertainty in H can be as high as 100 percent when when my delta t is 1 degree Celsius, is not it. So, people do quote uncertainties of H as high as 100 percent also, because sometimes you cannot plan your experiment and try to make it delta t larger. So, then in that case you have to be, you have to accept, okay. but here in this case at least we have a control. Why I am telling all these subtle details is that when you are doing, I am sure all of you have this experiment in your, you need to emphasize on these points to the students. Tell them a priori you maintain a delta t at least 10 degree Celsius. Precaution is wall temperature should not exceed certain certain number, so that your heater does not burn out. Is that okay? So, now what was I telling? Yeah, q double dash you will get q double dash, now you get h. Now, which temperature you have taken for calculating the heat transfer coefficient? You have measured 5 temperatures I guess, you have taken average of them and taken, okay. why did you average them? Does that make sense or does that not make sense? Because we have studied yesterday a concept called developing flow and fully developed flow. Which of that thermocouple you imagine that it is going to be fully developed? Which of that? Right from the first thermocouple will it be fully developed? No, last one someone said, who said that? Yes, last one is what you can expect, take only last one, do not go by your manual. Manual is only for those guys who cannot think, not for us. Okay. It has no meaning because developing flow heat transfer coefficient is decreasing and then it is becoming constant. Taking something in the decreasing portion has no meaning. Is that right? So, I should be taking only the last value and checking if you check that, if you have not done that, you go back and check it will match with your Dittus Volter correlation within 20 25 percent, notwithstanding so many errors in our, so many uncertainties in our measurements. Water gram, wall temperature because we know Q temperature. Correct, correct. And inlet outlet temperature. Correct. And wherever it is parallel. Yes, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. What professor is saying is that you know the wall temperatures, you plot the wall temperatures as a function of x. Now, bulk fluid temperature you know at the inlet and exit. You that we know for sure it is linear. Bulk fluid temperature is linear. For what case? Constant, this we can afford to do only for constant heat flux boundary condition. Check whether these two lines are parallel or not. If they are parallel right from word go from the first thermocouple, then it is fully developed. Otherwise, I will get a dip. You see, you remember like this you saw and later on they became parallel. So, that is a that is a right way. That is how, see point is I keep telling always whenever you do a lab, you should emphasize as professor keeps using the word marry, we have to marry theory with practice. Practice, in practice we have to keep coming back to our theory what we taught. Incidentally, lab comes always after theory, that is why it is, that is how it is planned, that is why we are planning. So, you go back and tell that this is what we learned, that is why it is behaving like that. So, for that your setup has to be strong, that means you would have done you should have done your experiment reasonably well several times. Okay. Last thermocouple we have checked myself and Venu, last thermocouple matches with the Dittus Volter within 20 25 percent. Okay. This is the this is the one of the experiments. Any other checks I can do? Ha. In this another thing I can do, I can estimate losses. You got 50 watts, how can I estimate losses? Can I estimate losses or maybe it is not possible? Yes, Sandeep. No, that is I will get, but can I estimate that loss? Can I estimate that loss? Because that has been encased in a container, and that container, of course, I do not have a temperature. Now, if I can measure on that container, put a thermocouple. Now, I can assume what are the modes of the heat transfer through which that container is going to lose heat to atmosphere? Convection and radiation. Assume emissivity of that surface, whatever it is, or if you have gun, you can measure it. 
So, H you will have to assume for horizontal plate for horizontal cylinder or plate using natural convection calculate Grash of number and calculate the heat loss because of convection. Similarly, sigma epsilon T wall to the power of 4 minus T surrounding to the power of 4 gives me the radius. If you compute within again 10 percent that computed value will come with what I should check now after calculating that V i minus M C P delta T should match with this. All these checks see essentially what am I trying to do? I am applying E dot in minus E dot out equal to 0 because there is no E dot G. Yeah, E dot G is there because I am putting E dot steady state E dot S T is not there. Make sure that they do the energy balance. Make sure that they do the energy balance. That is what I want to emphasize in the lab and make sure that they do the uncertainty analysis. How do I compute now the uncertainty in my H? Because I would take the experiment, one experiment in detail, other ones I will gloss over, but for one whatever I am telling is applicable for everyone. So, H equal to Q double dash upon T wall minus T bulk, right. What is the uncertainty of Q double dash? V i by area, area is V i by pi d L for a minute because reasonably we compute, we measure voltage with right one, but ours was very bad because our current meter has a least count because another thing we always have the, uh, the habit that we take least count as uncertainty in the absence of anything else. It is okay, but not always least count is equal to uncertainty. What is the least count of my watch? 0.5 seconds. So, any of our watches, but that need not be the uncertainty of my watch, it might be running 5 seconds faster. That is erroneous or it is having an uncertainty of 5 seconds. When will I be knowing that it is deviating? Whenever I compare with my standard, I compare with NDTV time or CNN IBM time because I am considering that as the standard. Okay? So, I should not take the least counts always, but in the absence that can be one of the options. Okay? So, I should take the least counts of each of them, diameter and length I am perhaps measuring with the vernier caliper, it is going to have 0 0.01 mm. Calculate the uncertainties of each one of them and get del q by q double dash delta q by delta double dash is delta v by v whole square plus delta i by i whole square plus delta d by d whole square plus delta l by l whole square square root of this is r s s root sum square root sum square ok. So, they should calculate this. Now, what is the uncertainty in T wall I know? 0.5 or 1 degree Celsius and I know the uncertainty in bulk. So, T wall minus T bulk I will get that much uncertainty. So, add up all that, that much should be the uncertainty of my H. Typically, my uncertainty whatever I calculate should be the deviation between the Dittus Volter and my calculated, my measured value should be around that around the uncertainty. If my uncertainty is coming around 30 percent, the deviation between Dittus Bolter and mine should be around 30 percent. If it is not so, if there is lot of deviation between the two, there is some serious problem. Let it be problematic, na? but we should make the students understand what is, let answers not come the right way, but we should offer explanations why they are not coming right way, what might have probably gone wrong that is what we should be able to make them. Another thing I have I will and one of the one of the faculty members asked me do you have any book for experiments? I, I, we have a book actually it is there in the library it is not coming out from my mind. Uh, there is a book, but in that book so nicely the experiments have been designed. For example, Bejan gives there no, 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 design of experiments for heat transfer, design of experiments, I, it starts with G that much I remember, design of heat transfer experiment, he just gives very simple experiments, you take ice plate, you take ice plate, put it in a container, this is a flat plate, put it in a container, how much it melts, 
it is a mass flow rate. So, that will from that we can compute the heat transfer coefficient of a flat plate. You need anything more? Can I get a thermometer, thermocouple or a thermometer and can I connect it in a container in a 100 ml flask? What more I need? Perspex container I can make to make keep it insulated. Only thing I should have a fridge, I should put a thread on that day of experiment and put that ice block and put it inside. You do not need very high fi experimental setups. Okay. So, I will scan that book at the cost of being or maybe I will suggest that book to all of you, you purchase that book through your institute. Okay. So, you can design experiments, we do not have to take those experiments, you can give them as projects. I, I know very well in university one good thing is students if you tell to make, they will happily, happily make and they are very good at it uh, and your workshops are quite strong. Okay. You do not need workshops, huge workshops, you can simply cut with perspex sheets, you can give with I, I can assure you in that book, you do not need for each setup more than 5000 rupees, this is also on the highest side, which you can draw as advances, which you can manage very easily. Is that okay? So, before main workshop, maybe I will come up with 2, 3 experiments at least, so that we can demonstrate that. Okay. I had given, I had done this exercise in IIT Gauti, unfortunately our numbers are so high here, we do not manage, but we should be doing, we should also do, when I am preaching, I should also practice. So, we should also attempt that. Giving that projects, that way each year you give one project, no? one setup will get, will get generated for Yes, okay. That's about that is about this. Next experiment was, yeah, we will see. Yeah, any questions you have, you please ask. Hmm. No, Q convected. I have not taken MCPDT minus Q radiation. Where did I take? I don't. I am not considering anything from the manual. I am only thinking out of my, out of the box. So what is? You ask me the doubt. Now you ask me the doubt. Never considered it in our lab. Hmm. The question was whether the then we calculated it by Dita's Volter equation. Correct. So whether in that experiment, because you have gone through that paper, they have eliminated that radiation effect. Which one? No. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, people what they do is okay, you have asked a good question. People what they do is always people do not take MCP delta T. How do you know that M C P delta T is right? You are assuming that M C P delta T is correct, but what people do is, what people do is, they take the container, that is they take the pipe, we have the heater anyway, no flow, there is no flow, close both sides, close both sides, now take, give that much heat, that is voltage and current, such that the wall temperature would be almost same as what it would have been with the with the flow with the flow then if you do that experiment it will take enormous time to reach steady state because it is and you should stuff inside some insulating material so that you are avoiding natural convection if you do that what is that you get you get q double dash voltage into current upon area versus t wall minus t infinity i am taking what do I get? Typically, you if you do this experiment, if you do for 4 or 5 values, you get a linear line. What is that? What is the interpretation of this figure? I can tell you this, this is Q loss. There is no flow, but this Q loss embeds both convection and radiation. That is, this Q loss has to be deducted from my V i, V i minus this Q loss should be of the same value roughly within 5 percent with my M C P delta. These checks and balances I have to do. Every time I am doing energy balance only, I am not doing anything else. So, that was a good question, I had forgotten about this. So, this is this check we have to do uh, before I lap up, otherwise I do not know whether I might be making a mistake in measuring my bulk mean temperature. Okay. So, that is the another check I take care of. Yeah. Next, what was the next, pro, next experiment? Natural convection have we done? No, no, no. So, what about heat exchangers? What is the LMTD you are getting? 
for parallel flow and for counter flow and for counter flow <laughs> so you expect lmtd of counter flow to be larger than so what might be the problem now first question i would ask what are the delta t's on cold side and hot side all the time what is the delta t on the cold side and hot side 4 or 5 degrees that is the culprit so when we do our experiment we have to keep because you see there he is not even measuring bulk fluid temperature what is the temperature i am measuring there no center line temperature i am measuring so with study after studying so much about bulk fluid temperature do you think that center line temperature is a representative of bulk fluid temperature no okay it is a measure of bulk fluid temperature it's quite difficult to tell like u by u maximum equal to 0.8 you take what was the equation you take for velocity u by u maximum equal to we wrote power law or if it is laminar you take u by u maximum or u average by u maximum equal to 0.5 for laminar for turbulent you take u average by u maximum equal to 2 n square divided by n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 where n is the power u by u average or u maximum upon y by r that is 1 minus r by r to the power of 1 by n that n it is so roughly if it is reynolds number is of the order of 1 lakh i get this ratio as 0.8 but this type of simplification i cannot do for temperature can i do or can i not do if i know the velocity profile if i know the constant heat flux boundary condition can i get what is the question i am asking if i know the center line temperature can i get the bulk fluid temperature if i know the velocity profile yes what is the bulk fluid temperature definition let's get back tb equal to 1 upon something something within the integral what is there you you should be you you should be knowing velocity profile and you should also be knowing temperature have i measured temperature profile no how will i get my bulk fluid temperature so i cannot get so center line temperature is a measure of something but in all heat exchangers that's what it is done you just insert center insert a thermocouple and believe that that is the temperature okay so delta t is my point is that whenever we do experiment for any heat transfer experiment we should take care that my potential differences that is the temperature differences are substantially large at least 15 at least 15 15 to 20 larger the better but in that pursuit if you go on doing my wall temperatures will go up i should be careful but in heat exchanger the tension is not there because you are heating and supplying so in heat exchangers you can easily afford to do you can easily afford to do so that's why we are getting the delta t lmt t now student will be puzzled अरे यार थेरी में कुछ तो पड़ता है इधर तो कुछ और आता है सो दट थेरी नेवर वर्क विथ प्रैक्टिकल दट वॉट ही विल ही शुड नॉट बी अंडर दट इम्प्रेशन वी शुड शो हिम दट वॉट वी टीच इज वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन द रियल लाइफ वर्ल्ड अदरवाइज ही विल लूज कॉन्फिडेंस ऑन अवर थेरी दट शुड नॉट हैपन दट शुड नेवर हैपन ओके वी शुड टेक केयर ऑफ दैट इफ इफ एट ऑल इट हेज हैपन द वे इट हेज हैपन वी शुड बी ऑफरिंग कन्विंसिंग एक्सप्लेनेशन in this case at least i can get away saying that my delta t's are less and uncertainties are anyway going to be of the order of 2 degree celsius 4 in 2 in 4 i am very much out that's what has happened that is what has happened in our heat exchanger problem okay second what is the third experiment yeah you have a question yeah for measuring the temperature when introducing a turbulent so it will mix the fluid and then you can measure So it is a mixing cup, no? That is what. But only bend alone may not give. See, I have to take it to. That's what Sandeep was saying. We have to take it to a container. I have to take it to a container. If this is my flow direction, I have to take it to a container and ask it to go through several serpentine passages. And now put thermocouples as many as possible in this, and then take the average of those thermocouples. That is all I. but water it is little easier if you take it to your flask and stir it or put some fan inside or even if you don't stir 
water more or less you are going to get because in the flask when it is falling anyway it is going out so anyway it is getting mixed so water is in fact that is how it is called as mixing cup it is it is getting mixed there okay that is that is that doubt always i used to have overall heat transfer coefficient of parallel flow heat exchanger how will it compare with the counter flow heat exchanger can i answer this question sandeep you are not answering i am going to ask you at the end what is overall heat transfer coefficient because we know heat exchangers so i don't think i need to wait till tomorrow yeah you are welcome to give 1 by u a equal to 1 by h i a i plus 1 upon h not a not let me neglect conductive resistance now now tell me yeah ंगर सेम my h i and h o are going to be same your u a has to be same u a doesn't know whether it is operating in counter flow or parallel flow u a only knows the convective resistances and the conductive resistance so when you plan when you do the experiment make sure that the mass flow rates what you do for parallel are same for counter flow this is one another otherwise you cannot interpret the results it becomes difficult please keep the mass flow rates same for cold side and hot side both for parallel and counter flow always i used to wonder what is this earlier but later on with time i understood this is that okay any questions on heat exchangers before we move on to the next one <coughs> उंटरोड larger in case of counter compared to no 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 large load is coming out but what we tell in the class is that for a given heat load the length required for counter flow heat exchanger is less why because delta t lmtd is higher but here i have kept the i cannot overnight change the length so length has to be kept constant so that is why my all that i can show here is that load is my heat taking load of the heat exchanger of a counter flow heat exchanger is greater than that of parallel flow heat exchanger that is a good question because we need to make them understand yes effectiveness ah okay no problem so did you compute effectiveness <laughs> okay no problem you calculate effectiveness because i don't recollect the relations myself but i remember that maximum temperature minus minimum temperature thi minus tci is sitting in the denominator and numerator i remember whatever is the temperature difference so correct correct so we will take effectiveness tomorrow while we are teaching sir heat exchanger another question whether qh is equal to qc or 
they should be different. Theoretically same, but are they going to be different? Yes, they are going to be different. Why? It is lost. So then, which one I should take? Average. Average. That's what Manuel say. <laughs> huh? Why QH? Huh? No, that is the amount which I am dumping into my system. But some amount of is, is going to my cold fluid, some amount is going to the surroundings. So, hot fluid is coming through the inner tube. So, QH is the amount which has crossed with the tube. That is the case when we are having the fluid flowing in the angular. But in this experiment, we are having the hot fluid passing through the inner tube. So, but outer wall can the cold side also can lose no heat. So, whether whatever is going in or out, there is going to be interaction with the atmosphere, there is bound to be losses to the atmosphere. Your argument is let us say hot water is flowing inert in the annulus, cold water is flowing. But cold water also eventually has to get heated up no, from my hot water. So, it has to interact with atmosphere the hotter hot cold fluid if I were, if I have to put it that fluid if I have to put it that yes. Hot water is interacting only with cold water that is not the amount of it which is exchanged is QH. So, see there is a confusion that is okay. That is okay, but all that you are giving is not going to cold fluid. No, no, sir. It is, it is, yeah, passing to sir, it is received by cold fluid and then it is lost. Yes. So, no, what about the mind 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 what about the next step? After I understood, after going through this only, it is going uh, huh. cold. Hmm. So, 100 is going out. This is keeping 20 this going on. I don't care, but energy balance is for this 100. Hmm. This is what I think. Yes. But all of this 100 is not going to my cold fluid. But because it is losing to the atmosphere, as it is getting heated up, it is getting my cold fluid, as it is getting heated up, it is losing its heat to the atmosphere. So there is loss. So you cannot argue, one second, you cannot argue that all that hot thing is going to the cold fluid. Whatever circus we do, there is going to be loss. No, 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 no. What you are saying is, I think the hmm. just the way of saying, heat lost by hot fluid is 100 watts. Correct, say. correct. Heat gained by the cold fluid, sensible gain is a only 80 watts. Correct. But that does not make the heat lost by hot fluid as 80 watts. That is what he said. Yeah. But uh, my point is, what are we trying to do in the heat exchanger? Correct. One second, one second. What are we trying to do in the heat exchanger? We want to transfer the heat from one fluid to the another fluid. But all that hot fluid thing, whatever I am giving is not going to the cold fluid. So, it is going, but hmm. it is not utilized in sensible heating because of the loss. That is what I am saying. So, your heat gain or heat loss or heat transfer for heat load calculation should be AC, not 100. Sir, we are bothered about the heat transfer across the tube volume. See, you are talking like an engineer, I am talking like a scientist. See, I mean, what, what I mean is, what I mean by saying this is that, what you are saying is that, okay, I am going to spend on my hot water is this, I do not care whether it is going to my cold fluid or losses, eventually anyway I have to eat my cold fluid, that is why I have to worry about 100 watts, whatever he has to, 100 watts, but I am not saying that. to do a calculation for estimating something, 80 is what the cold fluid has given, I might have spent 200 getting it. Yes, Sandeep. That is true. That is that is what. That cold water will absorb that much amount of heat, and then it will lose. I said, you know, simultaneously, as it is gaining heat itself, it has started talking to atmosphere. It doesn't wait to get heated up and then start talking with atmosphere. That cannot happen. So parallelly, it is happening both the things. So I have to take eighty. Liquid. That is all it is. So, that is why I am saying, that is why I said when I use the word, I am talking like a research scientist and you are talking like an engineer. As an engineer, you should be worried like that only. 
because you are spending 100 watts, you should be worried about those 100 watts. How much of that 100 watts is being utilized? You make 80 to 100. So I should not take average, which all manuals tell. I should take 80 watts. All manuals so please, even your manuals also, I am sure there will be lot of, lot of things. But your interpretation, let, let students follow those manuals. L let them allow, allow them to commit mistakes. We are not launching a rocket here. That's what I keep saying. We are not answerable for hundreds of crores. Everything can go wrong. Let it go wrong. No problem. But we need to explain them why things have gone wrong. That is all it is. That is all the aim of doing experiments. Okay, so so much about heat exchangers. Can we move on? Okay, so what was the next experiment? Emissivity. I don't think it requires any explanations. I have given already augmentation. Maybe Sandeep can take over from me and comment on force convection. What was the experiment? Flow over a cylinder. What is the objective? Now let me why why you. What is the objective? Then Sandeep can pitch in whenever he wants to determine the heat transfer coefficient around the cylinder. So, where all thermocouples have put? Only one thermocouple, several thermocouples. So, do I have any idea about at what all theta locations have put? No idea. So, I have couple of thermocouples and I am measuring the heat transfer, wall temperature. What is the boundary condition I have put? What is the boundary condition for the cylinder I have put? Constant heat flux. So, how did you calculate the heat transfer coefficient averaged again all temperatures? <laughs> H equal to Q double dash upon T wall minus T infinity. How did you get the T infinity here? Where did you take the T infinity? At the entrance. What was the what are the typical T infinities for you? 27 degrees Celsius. So, okay, it is it is cold flow. I mean, maybe slightly heated because of blow air. Fine. So now, Q double dash. What did you take? V into I. So can I take V into I? Complete V into I here. Are there any losses? So, but then which V? Which Q I should be taking here? Q is See, I have a cylinder. Perhaps if I Please correct me. What I am guessing is that heater is wound on that or inside? Inside. There is a heater embedded inside. Now you are heating this. Now whole of this VI is contributing for heating my cylinder. Now it is, it can undergo two modes of heat transfer. One is forced convection, another one is radiation. Yes, conduction, axial conduction. How thick is the cylinder? That is the question now. How thick is my cylinder? to answer whether it is axial conduction and what is the material. Maximum temperature is what? 1, 173, 173 plus 273, 173 plus 273. Oh, 37 means I should not be worried about radiation. Why? <laughs> So, why I am saying radiative losses will be very less, okay. 37 plus 273, 310 to the power of 4 minus 300 to the power of 4 into sigma is 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8 into epsilon is 0 0.3 I will take, okay. So, it is 19 watts, it is coming to, no, 19 watts per meter square, area is what, pi d l into pi diameter is I want in mm please, mm, 15 mm is the diameter, 25 is the diameter, length mm again 0 0.22 watts I get, 0 0.22 watts. So, I can, it is inconsequential, I can neglect the radiation. So, now I am convinced that radiative loss is less. So, what is the VI I have given? Total VI? 85.4 watts, okay. So, that is courtesy Sandeep current 
Yes, sir. Reasonably. Correct. Yeah, I can answer that this way. 85, let us, that is right. Whether that is right or not, I can check it like this. 85 divided by pi into d. What am I trying to do is compute heat flux. d is how much you said? 25 mm. Length is 150 mm. I get a heat flux of 7215. That is a reasonable heat flux. I can achieve. Typically in the labs, the heat fluxes what you can maintain easily without any damage is anywhere between 4000 to 10000 watts per meter square. If it is above that, then you you usually tend to get into trouble with wall temperatures. But this sounds okay for me, but why do you say professor it is little high? What was the current? What was the voltage? 12.2 and current is 7. 12.2 divided by 7. I am getting a resistance of 1.74 ohms. Please remember this. I am going to calculate now rho L by A resistance. Let me check whether that is going to come out like that. What is the material? What is the material? Steel? Steel. Steel is 19 to 20 to the power of minus 8 ohm meter is the resistivity typically 90 to 110. I will go ahead and take 100 into 10 to the power. Are you with me? I am calculating R equal to rho L by A. So, 100 into 10 to the power of minus what did I say? 8. Rho L is yeah, you are right. You are right. Nichrome wire. Now I cannot calculate because how much wire is I have put? You are right. I cannot get because I am used to calculating directly heating stainless steel tube. That's why. Okay. So you are right. I cannot calculate. But for me, with the nichrome wire, 1.2 ohms seems okay. Yeah. 1.2 ohms. 1.2 ohms should. Ohms you get, na? 1.75. Uh, there is one more point. Yes, Professor. Uh, you please uh, counter me. You, it's not that always I should be right. Just after the lunch today, hmm. I actually went to the HT lab hmm. and I found that the ammeter range is 0 to 5 ampere. And but I have taken 7 ampere. <laughs> Fine. No problem. That might be wrong. Now I would have to concede and agree to you, agree with you that or maybe earlier there was a different. That's fine. Okay. Yesterday. Oh, no, he gave because he remembered that's what he said. But that's okay. Earlier you might be using earlier different ammeter also. From the CD voltage, hmm. around it is showing around 0.8 ampere. But what happened before we uh, went to lab? Hmm. That the technician has some replaced that ammeter. That's why. No problem. See, I am not at all worried. I keep saying this. Those who never make mistakes never make anything. At the cost of being repetitive, I don't mind making mistakes at all. It's perfectly all right. But. Huh. <laughs> you should be worried. Yes. I don't know now because I have no confidence in my current. But now it has turned out to be 18 watts. Anyway, let us not believe those numbers. But my question is, numbers apart, my question is how do I compute the heat transfer coefficient? Radiate, all VI I can take. Okay. So, but if I were to know the location, I can compute the local heat transfer coefficients. Perhaps there is a point at Professor Harp yesterday, where should I expect slightly higher heat transfer coefficient? You remember? It was like this and again it went up and then came down. So, separation point perhaps you can get, I do not know whether because those, those many thermocouples are there or not. But at least at the stagnation point, if we know, we can compute the stagnation point Nusselt number. But, but I should take this with a pinch of a salt because if my thickness of my pipe is sufficiently large, it is going to get my, my heat transfer coefficient is going to get, am I going to get local or average? This is a very important point we need to drive home to students. I kept, I kept asking what is the thickness of the pipe, why? Because larger the thickness more conduction within the pipe and the temperature becomes homogeneous. If the temperature becomes uniform, then my heat transfer coefficient is instead of me doing integration, 
it has done the integration and given me the h average. Okay. So, in fact, if we are doing cylinder experiment, one experiment can be done with thin cylinder and one experiment can be done with the thick cylinder. Of course, I can it is easier said than done, but one can conceive of in the same setup. So, yeah, replacement of a cylinder with, with one batch can do perhaps with the thick cylinder, another batch can do with the thin cylinder and you can compare the heat transfer coefficients. Is that okay? But my point is one general statement I would like to make is that please insist on uncertainty analysis. They should know every number when I put h equal to 100 plus or minus what a tag has to be there plus or minus tag has to be there. If the tag is not there my readings have no meaning. I think with this we will sign off. Quite a fruitful day, yeah. Uh, the part. Uh, in the calculation, I was uh, having the opinion of uh, just if you have the value of WB is greater than WT. What is WB? Uh, w is the heat input to the black plate. Okay. I was having the opinion that if this WB is greater than WT, I can get the value of this emissivity less than 1. Correct. So, positive value. Correct. But uh, when I calculated, I came to know though this WT value is less than WP, still I am getting the emissivity value negative. So that I feel it is also related with some temperature difference between the enclosure temperature as well as the body temperature. Uh -huh. So, so what is your point is, his point is enclosure temperature, I am taking only T to the power of 4, I should be taking T to the power of 4 minus T surroundings to the power of 4, that is one point. Another point is, I do not know whether it is giving me the average temperature of the plate completely. The plate is there and the thermocouple is put. So, yes, sir. Yes, professor. You put up the two wires on the thermocouple across the plate, across. But wherever my bead is there, it will measure only there, no? Whatever I do. Not at a single point. You do not join the two wires. Aha, throughout. You make the plate itself at the junction. Multiple junction. Multiple junctions, yeah, yeah, that also can be done. That also can be done. Or you take copper plate and put take chromel wire, automatically a junction is formed. That is what people do for averaging. But of course, we are not doing anything, but I am suggesting several things. But anyway, I am just suggesting because you guys are quite strong in experiment, that is why I am suggesting all this. Is that okay? So, any more questions before we sign off? Okay. So, tomorrow also let us make it quite successful. So, we are starting at what time? 8.15 sharp, not just 8.15. Okay?